Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Day of the Devs. Day of the Devs. What? You don't know what Day of the Devs is? Day of the Devs is the greatest and definitely the oldest independent games festival that exists. It was started over 10 years ago by Double Fine Productions and I am Pit to celebrate uh, the best independent games out there and bring them to you, the fans. We want to bring developers and players together to get together, play games, and have a great time. It used to be a physical event only in San Francisco, but now it has gone digital so the whole world can enjoy it. And we're really excited this year to be part of uh, Summer Game Fest. Uh, so sit back, relax, put on your party hats. This thing, I'm supposed to put this on. That's right, everybody. Put it on your party hats. Everybody. Everybody. That's right, that looks good. Now we're cooking. Put on your party hat and enjoy Day of the Devs. We got a new one today. This is from a good friend Michael Frey and Rafael Munoz. Previously Michael made a game called Kids with Playables that we published at Double Fine Presents. And this is his new one. It's about the limited time we have on Earth told through the life of a fly. This is called Time Flies. Hello everyone. My name is Michael. You might know my work from a game called Plug and Play. I co-founded company called Playables where we made a game called Kids. Uh, but today we're going to talk about this guy in my upcoming project that is a collaboration with Raphael Muno, uh, who is the principal programmer on the game. The project we're collaborating on is called Time Flies. Time flies is about our limited time in this world. In Switzerland, where I'm right now, we have a life expectancy of maybe 84 years. In the US, it's about 77 years. So you have a little bit less time to achieve the things you want in your life. In Time Flies, the things you can achieve are nicely prepared on a bucket list. Uh, this is a very small part of that bucket list. Uh, so these are the things you can do in the world. The game is coming to PlayStation, Nintendo Switch, PC and Mac uh, sometime next year. Uh, please visit timeflies.bus where you can sign up for the newsletter uh, so you get updated when it's out uh, or you find a link to the Steam page where you can wishlist the game. Thank you.
Our next game is Planet of Lana, the debut title from Sweden-based Wishfully Studios and published by Thunderful Publishing. The gameplay is reminiscent of dark side-scrollers like Inside and Little Nightmares, but the vibes could not be more different. Who are these enigmatic enemies? What do they want with Lana's sister and her world? And what other secrets are there to uncover in this beautiful, boundless environment? Hello, my name is Adam Stjernius, and I'm the creative director at Wishfully. We're a small indie game studio in Sweden, making Planet of Lana. <laughs> In our game, you play a young girl called Lana, who is forced out on a mission to save her sister that has been taken away by an invading robot army. Early on in the game, Lana meets the mystical creature Mui. You quickly develop a strong bond and friendship to Mui, and she proves to be both intelligent and loyal. Being her own personality, Mui also has things that she's afraid of. But being small and agile also has its advantages. For example, being able to reach places that you can't. She also has this special ability she can use to control some of the strange creatures of this planet. Together, you have to make it through both the harsh and beautiful environments of Novo past dangerous robots, through deep and cold caves, unraveling long forgotten mysteries that all lead to your destined future. Planet of Lana is really a labor of love, and we're very excited here at Wishfully to bring you what we believe is a truly unique adventure. And beyond the companion-based puzzle solving and hand-painted art style, you will experience an engaging story with twists and turns that hopefully will stay with you long after the credits have rolled. Planet of Lana is coming to Xbox and PC this year, and you can wishlist right now at Steam or sign up at our newsletter at planetoflana.com. This next title from Two Star Games is quite literally an on-the-rails shooter. You and your little yellow train with its mounted machine gun and exquisite collection of bobbleheads face off against a demonic, clown-faced train who is hell-bent on devouring human flesh. This is Choo Choo Charles. Hey, I'm Gavin, I'm the solo developer behind Two Star Games, and I'm currently making Choo Choo Charles. It's an open world horror game where you navigate an island in an old train, upgrade it over time, and then use it to fight an evil spider train named Charles. If you pump enough lead into his face, that'll probably encourage him to run off and find something else to eat. You have one goal above all else, and that's to summon Charles to a 1v1 and fight him to the death. To do that, you'll need to explore the open world, looting abandoned areas and completing missions for the locals to gain powerful new weapons and scraps that you can use to upgrade your train's speed, armor, and damage.
there because it might be unwise to wander too far from your train. If you do encounter Charles while you're roaming around, it doesn't matter what you do now because you have If it sounds like something for you, be sure to follow and wishlist Choo Choo Charles on Steam. I'd greatly appreciate it. It really does mean a lot. We've got a special one for you. It's very personal and near and dear to I Am 8-Bit because it's a I Am 8-Bit Presents published title. It's called Escape Academy and think of it like Hogwarts, but for escape rooms. It's from developer Coin Crew Games and they hail from the arcade amusement space. They've designed escape rooms in real life. Better they talk about their game than me. Here they are. Hey, I'm Mike. I'm Wyatt. And I'm Michelle, the art director. Wait, am Wait. I supposed to say I'm the... <laughs> hey, I'm Mike. I'm Wyatt. We're the founders. And I'm Michelle, the art director. Oof, okay. This is... Uh, I hate that. All right, one, once, once more with feeling. <laughs> hey, I'm Mike. I'm Wyatt. And I'm Michelle. And we're Coin Crew Games. When Coin Crew Games was founded, uh, we were actually building real-world escape rooms and arcade machines, but when the pandemic hit, we needed to pivot. So we decided to take those learnings, building real-world escape rooms, and transpose them into a digital format, and thus Escape Academy was born. Good luck trying to hack me without sufficient power. Probability of your expulsion, high. Escape Academy is an escape room adventure game that you can play either single player or co-op. You play as a student at this titular, mysterious escape academy where you get to master the art of puzzle solving and train to become the ultimate escapist. What are you waiting for? A room full of gas is no place to relax. We're all fans of escape rooms, so when we couldn't find a digital, authentic escape room experience, we decided to make one ourselves. Walls are often misleading at the Academy. Escape Academy isn't just a puzzle game, it's an escape room game, and it brings that play pattern home. We have a huge amount of puzzles in this game, and they never repeat. And in addition to that, you can solve every puzzle using just your mind, no dexterity required, although you may want to bring a paper and pencil. The academic theming gave us the leverage to create a wide variety of rooms that support the narrative and put players in situations they would never find themselves in in real life escape rooms. When we were designing the game, it was really helpful to have uh, the experience of both playing a lot of escape rooms and designing real world escape rooms as sort of a design anchor to buoy us to. I did not anticipate the rodent assisting you. Bad turmeric. Sadly, that rat will be no help in bypassing my lasers. We really took our time to create an eclectic cast of students and faculty members that help guide you throughout the academic journey of Escape Academy. Building on the lessons that you get in each room and raising the stakes throughout your journey at the Academy was definitely a design pillar we wanted to make sure it came through in the final game. I am not, not feeling so well. Analysis, I have succumbed to disco fever. Escape Academy is coming to Xbox, PlayStation, and PC on July 14th and will be available day one on Xbox Game Pass. And you can wishlist us today on Steam. We'll see you at the Academy. Thanks. Escape Academy! This game's for all those fans of organization out there, all those organizers. It's from a studio called Max Inferno, and it's a game about getting things lined up just right. It's called A Little to the Left.
Hi, I'm Annie. Hi, and I'm Lucas. And we are Max Inferno. Yep, and we're really excited to share with you today a cozy puzzle game that we've been working on called A Little to the Left. A Little to the Left is a game where you sort, stack, and tidy up the house. In each level, puzzles are hidden among regular household objects, and you solve them by arranging items in a very particular way. Many of the levels have multiple solutions. It's all about observation and imagining the different structures that could be at play. The game takes inspiration from our own home and some of our own little tendencies. Another big source of inspiration for the game is our cat, Rookie, who should be around here somewhere. Occasionally, this cat will show up on the periphery of your gameplay and undo your tidy work, just to shake things up a little bit. The game starts off pretty simple, but as you progress, the logic behind the puzzles becomes a little more surreal. There is a lot to tidy up in a little to the left. Actually, every day brings something new. With the daily tidy delivery, you get even more out of our favorite puzzles. And you earn fun badges, too. Well, thanks for stopping by. We hope you enjoy a little to the left when it releases later this year. See you later. Bye. I've been excited about this one ever since it was announced ages ago. It's from developer Gummy Cat. It's called Bear and Breakfast. And the title says it all. You're a bear, you run in bed and breakfast in the woods, and it's really freaking fun. We're debuting a brand new animated trailer, a bunch of gameplay you've never seen, and finally announcing a release date. I'm Ioana. And I'm Radish. We're from Gummy Cat in Romania. Today, we're showing you our first game called Bear and Breakfast. It's a laid back management adventure game where you build and run a BB in the woods, but you're a bear. In Bear and Breakfast, you play as Hank, a young, curious bear from Silver Valley who lives in a small home with his mom and two best friends. We grew up on management sims. Games like Theme Hospital were big inspirations for us, but we also wanted to make a game that tells a story alongside the usual management stuff.
So it turns out that humans are coming back for some reason, and they need a place to stay. There's old, rundown buildings all over the place, and you're just the bear for the job. The game follows a linear story that you advance by solving quests. A lot of them involve finding materials, building rooms, crafting furniture, and decorating stuff. The actual furniture you do make awards different kinds of points. For instance, beds give comfort, showers give hygiene, that type of thing. You have to make sure that your room scores are high enough to satisfy whatever your guests are asking for. Each type of score comes with its own challenges. For example, later on you'll need to cook food for your guests through a minigame. There's a lot more to bear in breakfast but you can play at your own pace since the game won't rush you. Oh, and there's definitely no creepy subplot hidden somewhere in the forest. We're very excited to be part of Day of the Devs this year, and we can't wait to introduce you all to Hank and his friends when Baron Breakfast launches later this summer. Thank you. I don't want to say a lot about this next one. Uh, it's full of secrets and puzzles and mystery that are best discovered on your own. It's a beautiful game from a studio called Shared Memory. It's a pixel art metroidvania full of interesting creatures. It's called Animal Well. Hi, I'm Billy Basso. Today I'm going to be showing you a game I've been working on called Animal Well. In Animal Well, you explore a surreal and sometimes dangerous pixel art labyrinth that is filled with secrets. As you explore, you'll encounter uh, various creatures, but it's not always clear if they're friendly or not, so it's best to proceed with some amount of caution. Throughout the game you're going to find various items that will give you new abilities and help you solve some puzzles. Every item in the game has multiple uses, but you're going to have to experiment if you want to figure out what they all are. Animal Well is a pixel art game uh, that's not just a pander to nostalgia, instead I'm viewing it as a technical opportunity. A 4K TV screen has 144 times as many pixels, but that means I have 144 times as much processing power to apply to each pixel. Throughout the game you'll see a lot of things like fluid sims or dynamic lighting effects that haven't really been used in a pixel art game before. Designing Animal Wall is a layered experience, so what that means is the base layer is something the average person can play through and enjoy to completion. 
But then there's a second layer, which for most games you would consider this part like 100%ing the game. There are lots of hidden items uh, in nooks and crannies throughout the world. They're not obvious and they you might need some help to find these. The third layer has puzzles that don't really present themselves as puzzles. They might go unnoticed for years potentially, or they might require some community collaboration to solve. Also, there's a, there's a puzzle in this video that may require some community collaboration to understand. But the first 10 people to figure it out uh, will get a free copy of the game at launch. And then while you're doing that, you can maybe wishlist it. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much. Next up is Nyad, a colorful exploration game where you play as a water nymph, traversing a zen and peaceful world. This game comes to us from High Warp, a solo developer from Spain. Hi, I'm really happy to be part of the 10th anniversary of Day of the Devs at this exciting summer festival. I'm Elwin from High Warp, a solo dev in the studio from Spain, working on bringing to life very unique and personal games. I would like to say with you a preview of Nyad a relaxing and colorful exploration adventure of flowing by a river. I put all my love creating every part of this game, so please enjoy. The journey starts with the birth of a little water nymph at the spring of the river. Naya will grow up and mature, obtaining vitality from floating leaves and flowers, learning to swim like a duck, dive like a fish, dash like a frog, finding other adorable friends like butterflies, rabbits, snakes, turtles, cockroaches, and much more. Help them to find their way, avoiding obstacles and dangers, using your skills. You will immerse through a lot of beautiful places like a deep forest, a dark cave, a joyful creek, and more. Water symbolizing life starts pure and fresh, and little by little it will be fading into dark. You can sing to regenerate the nature, making sprout flowers in the path. And you must do your best, because the humans hmm, are controlling this river goal. Humans create their own fake rivers, like these noisy roads with strange mob creatures. You are the guardian of this river, and that seems to be a difficult task, but don't be afraid, because a tiny cloud will take care of you from the sky. The beautiful hair of Nayad is like its vitality. You can make it grow up under the sun rays, change its color, even tie small flowers on it. Creating Nayad, I focused on a wholesome experience. Enjoy it at your own pace, exploring and flowing. Nayad will be available for PC and consoles by the end of this year. Thank you for watching. If you ever find yourself longing for the good old days, then why not take a trip back to the Stone Age in this cooperative life and farming simulation game from Sodaden and Cryptico. Hunt and gather to care for your settlement, explore the ancient world around you, and best of all, become a friend to the mammoths. This is Roots of Pachá. Hi, I'm Timo, co-founder of Sodaden along with my brother. 
Hi, I'm Karen, the narrative designer. We're based in San Diego with the rest of the team in Argentina. Hola a todos, I am Dancer, the main artist. And I'm Johnny, Timo's brother. We are the team developing Roots of Pacha. A farming scene set in the Stone Age where you help your clan develop the ideas that shape humanity. In a time when there weren't stores to buy seeds or anything else, you build your village from the ground up. Instead of using money, you'll transform the world around you by contributing and working with your clan. Starting small, you'll explore the regions of this new land, discovering plants and resources along the way. Many of the ideas you develop were the cornerstones of early civilizations like farming, domesticating animals, and the creation of tools that are now common. Ideas will build on one another, and after a while, you'll find your community transform. You'll venture into the caves to meet the spiritual world, to try and explain who you are and why you're here. The game's Stone Age setting was inspired by the book The Clan of the Cave Bear. Roots of Pacha is set in simpler times, but the society is still complex. For example, finding something to eat went from satisfying a basic need to making a dish and creating a reason to gather. As you discover ways to make life easier, you'll find time to experience all the fun Pacha's world has to offer. You'll get to know your clan, meet others living around you, and maybe even find that special someone. Our love of farming sims started with the first Harvest Moons, and Stardew Valley took it to the next level. With Roots of Pacha, we want to make our own unique contribution to this genre. We're working on this project with all of our hearts. We're super excited for you to play the final version. In the meantime, we have a brand new demo that just went live today. Thanks for having us. Muchas gracias. And now I am very pleased to present a world premiere from our friends at Us Two Games, the folks who brought you Monument Valley, Alba, and a bunch of other really, really cool games. Here it is. At Us Two Games, we really try and take what's meaningful and great about games and deliver that to everybody. So with Monument Valley, we make people care about a character for the first time if they've never really engaged with games very much. And with Albro Wildlife Adventure, we took open world games and packaged that into a kind of theme about saving an island that more people are going to want to engage with than just the hardcore. And with this game, what we really want to do is take these genres that we really love, like roguelike games and turn-based tactics, add a little bit of sports game in there as well, and themes about dreams and conflicting fears, and really package that together into something that feels really unique. In the game, you play the role of Desta, who's a young person in their early 20s, who's coming home for the first time, having not left home in the, the very best way, their relationship with their mother and their family and their friends. There's a few of them that were a little bit broken, and they were broken because they didn't really have the words to say. And their father, who used to be a big part of their life, unfortunately passes away, and they don't have those tools and that person to lean on to, to bridge that gap. So they manage to go home, they find this old ball they used to play with their dad, and when they try and fall asleep with it, they find themselves in a world between worlds, neither asleep nor awake. 
And when they're in this, they can explore these moments, these memories, and solve these creative problems through a, through a ball game. And when they do that, they find the right words to say to confront these people. The people we're going to be meeting in Desta's dreams are people who were significant to Desta before they left town a couple of years back. And there are lots of people they don't know quite as well, too, and some people who have been shaped by Desta's impression of them in their dreams. But they've all had a profound impact on Desta's life. These characters are really interesting because all of them are interwoven as part of Desta's story, but also with each other. They don't just appear as abstractions, but they really feel like a part of the makeup of Desta's background. One way or another, the people that Desta meets throughout the game helped Desta become who they are today. And they've taught Desta a number of different things, like standing up for themselves, taking risks, expressing themselves, and more. There are a few different themes in the story, but I would say that certainly loss is a big part of it. Finding yourself, courage and perseverance, and reawakening. No pun intended. It feels like we've been able to put a lot of our, ourselves into Desta. Um, the same is true for pretty much all of our games, but Desta in particular is very personal to a lot of the members of the team. Um, I'm sure we can all relate to some of the themes of maybe having ghosted a friend and not being sure how you could like get back in touch with them or dwelling over how you might have said something in a conversation and like having that play over and over in your mind, which is like one of the core themes of the game. It's definitely got more depth and more game mechanics than anything we've made before, and it's being designed from the ground up to be a multi-platform title. We're really looking forward to telling you more about Desta, the memories between in the coming weeks and the coming months. This next game is called Shim. Uh, it's a shadow platformer. You're a little blobby character platforming around inside shadows and a game with a really cool minimalist graphic art style. I hope you like it. Hi, I'm Ewout and I'm the developer of Shim. And I'm Niels from Exonize and I help Ewout develop Shim. We're located in the north of the Netherlands in a town called Leeuwarden. We are a team of two plus the talented people at Moonseller, Moody Audio. Schim is a game where you move around in shadows. You play as a Schim, a shadow creature. As a whole, Schim is made to be approachable for a variety of players. At its core, it's about jumping around in shadows and platforming towards the end of a level. Each shadow has her own Schim. The player plays around as a schim of a human. However, this schim is separated from that person and it's up to you to find your way back. In the game, you will also help other schim characters who have also been separated from their shadow. You can help them by finding their object. Schim takes big inspiration from the feeling of playing as a child. Playing imaginary games with made up rules, move around in shadows and jump to the next shadow. Check it out and follow us at schimgame.com. Hi everyone and thank you Dev the Dev for having us this year. I'm Anne, the manager of Asobu, a community hub for indie game creators in Tokyo. We have a space where people can come to work and meet other people, do small gatherings, and we are helping Japanese devs by introducing them to platforms, console publishers, helping them on marketing, or as usually they don't speak English, helping them to apply to overseas events like this one. And we're also doing a lot of online contents and streams, uh, like our big Asobu Indie Showcase, which will be aired this summer in English and Japanese, or our monthly stream indie collection and podcast, and many other things you can check on YouTube and Twitch. But first, uh, let's check two really cool Japanese titles.
Fox and Frog Travelers, The Demon of Arashino Island is a 3D action adventure game with a Japanese-inspired atmosphere. You will play as Fox, her girl who finds herself on Arashino Island and starts traveling with Frog. Tori Gates, Fusto Lantern and Neon gives light and color to the island. But something is lurking in the shadows, inching even closer. Fox and Frog Travelers is developed by Rias, an illustrator and concept artist that came up with the idea for it, based on one of his illustrations. Fox and Frog Long Journey Through the Night is planned for release in a few years. First game of the young solo developer Yo Fuji, Goodbye World is a narrative game about two young in game creators, the shy Kani and the extrovert Kumade. Mixing influences from comics like Ghost World and games like The Beginner's Guide or Moses 3, Goodbye World is a tale about the passion and struggles that comes with game creation. Through certain chapters of the story, rendered in beautiful pixel art in a resolution close to the Super NES and Game Boy Advance. Goodbye World is due out on Steam later this year. If you like those games, don't hesitate to wishlist and to follow the devs on Twitter. And if you are interested by uh, Japanese indie scene or indie games, uh, you can follow us on Twitter, on Discord, chat with us and watch our indie game showcase, which is uh, coming this summer. And thank you again for watching and Day of the Devs for having us. The process of moving to a new city can be daunting. Our next game, Birth, from solo developer Madison Carr, who hails from Chicago, explores the idea of quelling loneliness through this puzzle adventure. Hi, my name is Madison, and I am making a game called Birth. Birth is a point-and-click puzzle game about living alone in a large city. In order to quell your loneliness, you decide to create a creature, a friend, a partner for yourself, by collecting spare bones and organs that you find while traversing the city. You will explore libraries and post offices and museums and cafes and apartments that don't belong to you. In each of these buildings, you will meet creatures and you will get to know them by searching through their personal belongings. Their laptops and phones, their cabinets and their notebooks. Within these personal belongings, there are puzzles. Some are physics-based, some are pattern-based, uh, some are abstract. There are no instructions, and you are rarely doing the same thing twice. Alongside the main game, there are optional hidden tokens that you can find to unlock secret buildings and treasures.
Birth comes out this August. I made this game with my whole heart, and I hope that you like it. In our next title, How to Say Goodbye, you play as the ghost of a person who's recently died and is embarking on the journey of accepting their own death. The mechanics underscore the message that there's always a way through grief. You may get stuck, but you can always stop, reevaluate, and keep moving. It's all just part of the puzzle. Hi, I'm Florian, co-author of the upcoming narrative puzzle game, How to Say Goodbye. In How to Say Goodbye, you help a group of quirky ghosts overcome various obstacles and conundrums by reorganizing the level as you like. Moving one tile will also push the surrounding tiles. The puzzle elements are only moved around, but never removed, so just like a Rubik's Cube, the puzzles never end up in a state where you can't solve them. Follow various characters looking to discover why they are still here and how to move on while trying to escape the grasp of an evil wizard who doesn't know how to let go. How to Say Goodbye tells a story of loss and grief, but we intend the experience to be as gentle, kind and positive as possible. If this sounds like something that you would be interested in, please wishlist the game. It would mean a lot to us. Thank you. Oh, hi. Well, wasn't that a great show? And a great cake, and it's all gone. And so now we have to say goodbye. I hope you liked that. I hope you liked all the games. Thank you to all the developers for making such fantastic games and for bringing them here for everyone to enjoy. Special thanks to all of our generous sponsors. You've always been there for us, and we could not do this without you. PlayStation, Idea Xbox, Nintendo, Steam, Epic Game Store, y'all are awesome. Thank you. Extra special thanks to Dose One, the Magic Man, for supplying all the beats and sound effects and tunes you hear in every summer Game Fest edition of Day of the Devs. We couldn't have done any of this without you, or at least it'd be really quiet uh, and kind of suck. We're not done with the Day of the Devs 10th anniversary just yet. If you go to dayofthedevs.com and sign up for our newsletter, you will be amongst the first to hear about all the excitement that's to come this year. Uh, other than that, thank you so much to everybody who watched, and we'll see you next year. Bye! We'll see you next time.
Aha, you thought it was over, but it is actually not. Day of the Devs continues with a special after-party performance by the one and only Peter Berkman of Anamanaguchi fame. He's debuting new music from a game you've probably never heard of. It's called Little Nemo and the Guardians of Slumberland. And the reason you haven't heard of it is because it's debuting on Kickstarter at this very freaking moment. Enjoy, see you later. Thanks for tuning in to Day of the Devs, Summer Game Fest Edition. Bye. <laughs>